Ladies and gentlemen, the day has finally come. When the Italian Tech Tree cruiser line debuted in World of Warships Legends, it only came equipped with armor piercing and high explosive shells. But now, if you go to the ship upgrades of any one of these Tech Tree Italian cruisers, you can change out the artillery upgrade that you would normally put on every ship for one that gives you semi-armor piercing and armor piercing shells. And you can see that's what I'm using here on the Tier 7 Italian Tech Tree Cruiser Amalfi, which even before it got access to SAP, I think was a pretty good cruiser. But now, well, certainly I think it's worth grinding to and worth playing. The SAP is pretty potent, although I have to tell you I have played the Italian Tech Tree Cruiser line on PC, and here, as in there, the Amalfi sap is not the best sap you could possibly get. Now I eagerly await the day that they put Venezia in this game, because while the Amalfi sap is pretty good, I haven't quite seen it reach that sort of, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it honestly, that sort of holy shit level that you get when you fire a sap salvo at something from the Venezia. Amalfi, though, pretty good. So I'll walk you through a little bit about sap and how it works, and I'll tell you what I'm doing in this game, because this just happens to be one of the better games I've gotten in the Amalfi in a while. So we spawned over here on the Charlie flank. We know there's a Ganaiza now and a Miyoko over here. There's probably something else as well. In fact, likely a destroyer inside that cap, the Charlie one, since it's being occupied by neither the Miyoko or the Ganaiza now, at least not yet. There's a destroyer inside, so we do need to be careful. And the question is, how do we deal with this Miyoko? We can't quite hit him over this rock cropping, but we do have our rolling smoke screen, which will break his line of sight so that we can sail past this rock outcropping. He won't be able to see us, so he won't be able to shoot us, but since he's giving us flat broadside, we're switching to the armor piercing. On the likes of cruisers and battleships, you're probably never going to citadel them at the higher tiers with the sap. So whenever you get a broadside, especially on a cruiser, AP will be your best friend. You will need to switch. And of course, our switching does pay dividends there. We dev strike the Miyoko, and we get the first blood medal with the armor piercing. It's going to be something to keep in mind when you're playing these Italian cruisers. Broadside enemy cruisers, you want to shoot AP at them. Otherwise, you can switch to sap, and it works in most situations. I suppose the way you could think about sap is that it takes the best features of both high explosive and armor piercing and combines them together in one package. H high explosive generally is considered, I suppose you could say, the dumb sort of shell, because it will penetrate any armor surface regardless of angle and regardless of distance as long as that armor surface meets, meets the HE shell's penetration threshold. HE has a set penetration threshold. For example, 203 millimeter HE shells will penetrate 32 millimeters of armor and below. Anything above 32 millimeters of armor, they'll simply shatter. The same is true for sap. Although the penetration threshold on 203mm sap guns, like the Amalfi has, is much higher than 32mm. Nevertheless, you want to aim it at the more lightly armored parts of ships. The superstructure, upper belt armor, battleships, same thing for cruisers. But for destroyers, sap is absolutely devastating because they have no armor. So the sap will always get full penetration damage on them. And if you hit enough sap shells, I'm pretty confident you could comfortably dev strike a destroyer. You see there only one sap shell does 1675 damage to that moss. Unfortunately, I don't think we get the kill, but the moss is taken care of and there's only one enemy DD left. Sap becomes a little bit less impressive if you're fighting against more heavily armored battleships like, say, the Germans or the Italians. These heavily armored battleships have many more armored surfaces that can shatter the sap shells, so you really do need to have to aim for superstructure. But the general rule of thumb is that you should aim sap in the same places that you aim HE, 
sap will when it penetrates it will always get full penetrations it will never over penetrate the distance at which you shoot does not affect the penetration of the sap shell and angling doesn't really work against sap either sap shells can ricochet but you need to be at like i think a 15 or 18 degree angle or something really steep like that to get the sap shell to ricochet otherwise if the armor is thin enough it will penetrate if the armor is too thick it will shatter and it will do a lot a lot of damage to battleships of certain nations the french battleships are especially vulnerable to the sap so are the british and the americans the germans the Russians and the Italians are all somewhat resistant. But, you know, if you find you're shooting a broadside battleship and your sap isn't doing uh, an impressive amount of damage, simply switch to the armor piercing. Now we're approaching the center of the map. By the way, we've taken the Charlie cap. We want to get into Bravo now. We're able to take out the Zeton. Notice we were very consistently getting about 4,000 damage every single time we were hitting him that's one of the great features about sap is it's very consistent in its damage output the unfortunate thing is that it will saturate when you shoot at enemy ships and if you continuously shoot at say the superstructure on a battleship after it has been fully saturated you will see the sap damage numbers go down quite significantly but I think the addition of sap here sort of gives the Italian cruiser line a unique flavor that is shared by no other cruiser line in the game. A lot of people didn't think they were really worth playing prior to sap being a thing, but now that sap is here, I highly suggest you grind to the Amalfi because it's great. Not just because it shoots the sap now, it was great before that, and I'll tell you a little bit about why. Number one is that the Amalfi is exceptionally fast for a cruiser. In fact, I think it may be the fastest tier 7 cruiser in the game. That's even over things like Charles Martel. Charles Martel may be able to get up to speeds rivaling Amalfi, but in order to do it, it needs to make use of its engine booster consumable. Amalfi doesn't get one of those. Instead, it can hit speeds of like 37 knots without an engine boost, and that makes it very, very quick indeed. Plus, if you build for double rudder, you can get the rudder shift down under five seconds, which makes the ship very agile. And if you put Kondo as one of your inspirations, you still have a ridiculously good 10.3 kilometer concealment. This is without the concealment mod, by the way. It's still 10.3 kilometers, so that's how I build it, with double rudder shift and Kondo is, or not Kondo, Mikawa. Sorry, he's the cruiser commander. Mikawa as one inspiration. Got 10.3 km concealment, sub 5 second rudder shift, excellent maneuverability. And another good thing about the Amalfi is that it is fairly heavily armored. Yes, the bow and the stern are both, I think, 25 millimeters of armor, so they're overmatchable by 15 and 16 inch guns. But the upper belt armor on the Amalfi side is 27, so it can bounce 15 inch shells. And of course, the Citadel belt armor is thick enough to bounce both 15 and 16 inch shells. So the Amalfi is reasonably tanky when you can tank shells off of its side armor. I think you've already seen that in action a little bit when we beached ourselves against that island there. Battleships were shooting at us. They didn't do a whole lot of damage. Not as much damage as we did to the broadside Albemarle there, who we just citadeled, and there's our Kraken. That just leaves the Bismarck left. And this last sequence of the game, I'm just sort of figuring that, well, all the enemy ships have perished. Bismarck's the only one left. We've got five ships left to face him. I can play as aggressively as I want with no fear of adverse consequences. Even if I go down, there's no possible way my team could screw this up badly enough that we lose. So we see the Bismarck B is going to come out. He wants to fight to the death. 
going to launch some torpedoes, not on the indicator because we are assuming he's going to turn in. And we're basically just going to try to YOLO him, which is something you can pull off in the Amalfi, especially thanks to the smoke screens, although we aren't going to get that chance. Bismarck comes around the corner. We get a nice juicy sap salvo into his superstructure. There you can sort of get a taste of some of the better sap salvos you can get. I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, if you shot at perhaps a French battleship and got, oh, over 10,000 damage with a single sap salvo before the French battleship has taken much damage in the game and isn't really saturated anywhere. Yeah, that's entirely doable. The sap can be pretty pretty gnarly to battleships and cruisers, and of course devastating against destroyers. But you can see here, as we're able to keep our side angled toward the Bismarck, that we are able to stay relatively safe. His secondaries were taking a little bit of a toll. We can't really do much angling against those, but his main guns, we can ricochet at least a little bit, and the fast rudder ship does help us out with that we are able to angle properly and you can see the Bismarck shooting his main guns I mean some of these shells do get some penetrations I think on our superstructure maybe but the rest of them ricochet off the side armor the Amalfi is incredibly tanky versus 15 inch guns this hasn't changed this has been a feature since the beginning and you can even protect yourself from 16 inch guns with this side armor to some degree you still might get chunked very bad but you won't get citadeled and that is the key there. Unfortunately, we are not tanky enough that we can sustain the combined firepower of the Bismarck secondaries and main guns forever. The Bismarck is going to take us down, but I think we've done a fairly respectable amount of damage. 113,000 damage and 5 kills for the Kraken. Could have made that a 6-pack maybe if these torpedoes had hit the Bismarck, but unfortunately they're not. And my team is going to take a couple more moments finishing him off, which I don't think we necessarily really need to watch. But bottom line here is that now that the Italian Tech Tree Cruisers have SAP, I highly recommend going out there, changing the artillery upgrades on any of the Italian cruisers you have to the ones that give you access to SAP, and playing these again. I think they're well worth revisiting. The SAP gives them something unique over all the other cruiser lines, and you can combine that with the smoke screen, and it's, it's a really interesting time. The SAP is pretty good, particularly on the Amalfi. I played the Zara and the Trento as well. I think it seems decent there. Once you get into the lower tiers like the Monte Cuccioli, you probably shouldn't be expecting too much from the SAP. It might be pretty good, but it's probably not going to be blowing anybody out of the water. The higher tiers, of course, is where it's going to get super spicy. And now that we have this app, I, for one, am very much looking forward to what I assume is the inevitable debut of Venezia. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already done that. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.